This lesson is about current electricity. I'm going to let my man Bill Nye start us off. Well, electricity is the flow of tiny particles called electrons. And they're not just smaller than atoms, they're actually part of atoms. Take a look at this. It's our battery-powered electrical circuit of science. We're going to run this big light with this big battery. Watch. See, right now, electrons can flow from this side of the battery, through this wire, through the switch, through this wire, into the light, and back to this side of the battery. They're flowing in a closed path, what scientists call an electrical circuit. Now, circuit, that's from an old word for go around. So electrons, right now, can go around an electrical circuit. The flow of electrons is a lot like the flow of water. No kidding. Watch. When I operate this great big water pump of science, water goes through this hose into this box and makes this water wheel go around. And it goes out the other side and through this hose back to the pump. It's a closed path for the flow of water. It's a water circuit. It's just like the flow of electrons through an electrical circuit. Bill's analogy to water flowing through a hose is very helpful when learning about electricity. Whether I mention it or not, if you're having trouble understanding a concept related to current electricity, imagine the situation as if it were water molecules flowing through a hose instead of electrons flowing through a wire. Let's start off by defining current. Current is the rate at which charge flows. I is equal to charge divided by time. I stands for current, Q is charge, and T is time. Let's take a look at the units. If we plugged in a charge and a time, we would end up with coulombs per second. And that's perfectly appropriate. I think coulombs per second makes a lot of sense. However, we have a special name for this. A coulomb per second is also known as an ampere, abbreviated with a capital A. This is often called an amp. Let's take a look at an example. In one minute, 0.3 coulombs of charge pass through a copper wire. What is the current in the wire? Well, we start with our equation. We know we have 0.3 coulombs, and we have 60 seconds. Not one minute, 60 seconds. Here we can see that our current would be 0.005 amps, which would also be known as 5 milliamps. Here's another example. How much charge passes through a wire in 20 seconds if there's a current of 2.5 amperes? Let's revisit conservation of charge and see how this applies to current. Since charge is a conserved quantity and the current is the rate at which charge flows, then current must also be conserved. This is called Kirchhoff's first law. At any junction in an electrical circuit, the sum of currents flowing into that junction is equal to the sum of currents flowing out of that junction. Here's an example. The junction is that circle in the middle. And if you look at the two currents I1 and I2, you can see that there are 9 amps flowing into the junction. If you look at I3, you can see that there's 8 amps flowing out of the junction. Well, if there's 9 amps flowing in, there has to be 9 amps flowing out. Since we only see 8 amps flowing out in I3, then I4 must be 1 amp flowing out. Now we have 9 amps flowing in and 9 amps flowing out. Here's another example. I1 is 15 amps flowing out of the junction. I2 is 9 amps flowing out of the junction. What would I3 be? Electrical resistance. When electrons travel through any component of a circuit, their rate of flow is reduced. Each component has a property called resistance, even the wires. The resistance of a wire, such as the filament of a light bulb, depends on a few of its physical properties. First of all, the resistance of the wire is directly proportional to the length of the wire. Think about it like this. It's harder for electrons to get through a long wire 
than it would be for them to get through a short wire. The resistance of a wire is inversely proportional to the thickness of the wire. The thicker the wire, the easier it is for electrons to flow. The quantity that we actually use that's related to the thickness of a wire is called the cross-sectional area. If you took a wire and cut it in half and then looked at the end, you'd see a circle, and that circle would have an area. The resistance of a wire is inversely proportional to that area. Remember, the area of a circle is pi r squared, and they actually remind you of that on your reference tables. Finally, the resistance of a wire depends on what material it's made out of. Wires can be made out of copper, or gold, or silver, or a variety of other metals. Each material has a property called resistivity. This is abbreviated by the Greek letter rho. The resistance of a wire is proportional to the resistivity of the metal that it's made of. You can look up the resistivities of certain metals on your reference tables. If we put those relationships together to get an equation, we end up with R, the resistance, equals rho L over A. Let's take a quick look at the units for all of these quantities. Length, as you might suspect, is measured in meters. The cross-sectional area is meters squared. Resistivity is measured in ohm meters. And when you put all those together, resistance is measured in ohms. That symbol is the Greek letter omega. Let's take a look at an example. A 5 meter long copper wire has a diameter of 3 millimeters. First, what is the cross-sectional area of the wire? Well, area is pi r squared, and radius is half of the diameter. So if the diameter is 3 millimeters, the radius is 1.5 millimeters. As always, we don't want millimeters, we want meters. We can change that to 0.0015 meters. When we square that and multiply by pi, we should get 7.065 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared. Now we can determine the resistance of the wire. R equals rho L over A. We can look up the resistivity of copper on the reference table. It's 1.72 times 10 to the negative 8 ohm meters. We know that the wire is 5 meters long, and we just found out the cross-sectional area. The resistance of this wire would be 0 0.012 ohms. Here's another example. A 2.5 meter long silver wire has a diameter of 2 millimeters. What is the cross-sectional area of the wire? What is the resistance of the wire? 